you're trying to escape from the curses I was born to break. Finding a way to overcome my fears. I am strong enough. There might be some bumpy roads ahead, but I'm equipped. Some great lessons The power lies in me Now I see so clearly All my steps are destined To a love that never runs out I am connected to a source that never runs out I am connected to a love that never runs out I am connected to a source that never runs out I am connected to a love that never I have some things to share with you that I've never shared before publicly with anybody. Tarleton, you die for what you believe. Jesus is the savior of the world, the whole world, all men. He's affecting the world, the world. He's a pastor that thinks world, and that's what God wants. He did not come into the world to condemn the world, but that through him the world might be saved. If he didn't condemn, why do we? That's all I'm saying. Brother, you ain't just here to have a little meeting. God's called this thing. God said, all right, 
I don't want you to, to walk in no footprints that are already there. He creates some new ones. The E. Paul is, is one of my spiritual sons. He's my first expansion consciousness son. When Bishop Pearson transitioned, a lot is on my shoulders now. And I don't perceive myself as the successor of Carlton Pearson. I perceive it as a succession. But there, has, there have to be some voices who can speak and know what he taught and give it and be able to answer the questions. I know that he prepared me for this moment. Well, good evening, everyone. There's the wave. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Uh, come on in the room, chill, children, children, as Bishop Pearson would say, get up off that stuva, get somewhere and sit down. Welcome to Bishop Carlton D. Pearson's The Gospel of Inclusion. I am your host, Bishop D. E. Polk. With uh, the transition of our beloved uh, bishop, uh, we are seeing quite a, a level of curiosity around the ideas of inclusion. And so whether you're all in uh, into inclusion or whether you're kind of a Nicodemus who comes by night to ask uh, some maybe cautiously curious questions, you're welcome at this table. Uh, inclusion must be just that. It must include those of us who are, uh, have adopted a bigger and better vision and version of the ultimate reality that we call God, a, a paradigmatic shift, if you will. And it also includes those who are still somewhat in traditional thought, dogmatic ideas. I want to give you um, an idea tonight before uh, I welcome our special guest that I'm very excited about. And the idea is this, our current consciousness is not synonymous with our eternal capacity. I'll say it again one more time. Our current level of consciousness is not necessarily synonymous with our eternal capacity. If I could take just about 20 seconds and let you know that the Carlton Pearson that that we knew from 2000 about 2000 1998 to 2023 November 19th 2023 you would not believe the level of thought progression and evolution and, and unfoldment Carlton Pearson was strict holiness he was uh, fell into the camps of white evangelicalism he was on uh, the board of, of for morality of both of both Bush presidents he ran for mayor of Tulsa, almost won, on a Republican conservative uh, ticket. And that was not the Carlton Pearson that we knew in inclusion. So what am I saying? There are some Carlton Pearsons out there tonight who are listening. There's a portal that's beginning to crack open in your consciousness. God is doing something to open up your mind, to open up your ears, to, to soften your heart to some of these ideas. And those of us who have been in this movement for 20 years must show inclusion. Yeah, we weren't here 20 years ago. We didn't think this way 20 years ago. Eckhart Tolle says it this way, we are not our thoughts. We are not the thinker of our thoughts. We are the observer of the thinker that is having thoughts. At Spirit and Truth Sanctuary, we say it this way, we are not our beliefs. We are the spirits capable of having beliefs. I'm capable of having beliefs, changing beliefs, exchanging beliefs, I'm also capable of clearing out all beliefs so that there is no obstruction to the full agency and power of the Holy Ghost in my life. I say it like this. People ask me, what do I believe? I say, I don't have, I don't have any beliefs. I consider a lot of things, but I don't believe many things. <laughs> Love is about the only thing that I believe. All right, that's a good uh, kind of a um, caveat into in the introduction of gospel star, Hollywood star. Uh, my friend, my brother, Larry Reed is in the house tonight. Our guest tonight uh, is uh, has a live interactive digital show. It is raw. It is humorous. It is controversial. It is relatable to all of our lives. Uh, he has over 340,000 combined followers, 30 million views on YouTube. He is looking awfully sexy in that muscle shirt tonight. And I know him as a friend too. And for me, as Carlton Pearson's son, as a defender of my precious, beloved spiritual mentor, Carlton Pearson, welcome to the show, Dr. Larry Reed. And hello, how are you doing, my spiritual brother? My spiritual brother, I'll take that. You're looking good, man. The, that shirt is accent and all that tricep and that shoulder. Look at you. Yeah, you know, I'm 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 having to trans. What's the word? I'm actually a, I'm trans. Is that what I'm saying? I'm trans <laughs> because I'm, I'm moving from fat. Larry Reed that everybody came to know and, and I'm back to my normal size. So everybody's oh my God, you lost so much weight. 
No, I'm back to the size that I was. The reality was I didn't look in the mirror for about 20 years wow. and I got fat. And one day I got out of the shower. I looked in the mirror. I said, let me, who, who are you? Did you, you not Larry. Who this? Yeah. And I, <laughs> and I went live and I told everybody and it was in 2020 August. And I put my entire community on the Build Your Immune System Health and Wellness Challenge. Wow. And I began my weight loss journey. And well, I'm glad to be this size. The only thing that matters is this question. Is it working for you? And it looks like it's working. So as a Bishop Pearson would say, keep on, keep on working it. Keep on working. Yeah. Man. So I'm, I'm going to give two things as a little, uh, a little icebreaker tonight about Larry Reed and my relationship with him. First of all, today on social media, someone was asking about my little goofy wave that I do. <laughs> I, I love when Bishop D.E. does that little goofy wave. So the first time I talked to Larry Reed, um, he said, Larry said to me, D.E., when I saw you do that little goofy wave, I knew that you had a good heart. I knew I could trust you. <laughs> Honestly, I, I mean, it, was, it was so funny how it worked out. I mean, we were all grieving, dealing with the passing of, of Bishop right. Pearson, and Shamaka was sitting right near me. And I said, who, who is this guy? I said, D.E. I said, oh, that's the guy that Bishop Pearson always told about. I said, but I never met him. And you waved. I said, Marco, look at this. I said, look at this. I said, I said, can you see his heart? I said, a lot of people don't know the major, some of the major parts of the heart in the end of the finger. Wow. And that's the reason why you're not supposed to lay heart quickly on no man or lay hands. Ah, on look no at man. that revelation. Yeah. yeah so, that. so when I saw your hand, I could look right into your soul. I said, Aww. oh, this is a great guy. I said, Michael, y'all will make good friends. And now y'all great friends. You know? That's my great. buddy. Shemaka's my buddy. Hey, Shema hey Sh I call him Shemuscle now. What's up, Shemuscle? <laughs> Uh, all right, so second second thing, this is a confession, Larry. I've never told you this before, but okay. uh, Bishop Pearson always stayed in my home. Anytime he was in Atlanta, he stayed with us. And, it, you know, it would be Friday night. So I would say, hey, do you want to go see a movie? Do you want to go eat? What do you want to do? Mm -hmm. The last couple of years, I had to share him with you. And he would say, uh, I'll be back in a little while. I'm going over to see Larry Reed. And I, I felt some sort of, I was like, who is Larry Reed? And why is he taking my bishop from me? And then when I met you, uh, on the phone, and then we embraced in Tulsa. I said, "Okay, I, I know now why he was at Larry Reed's house. He was yeah. celebrated and loved every time he was with you." Yeah, and and one thing that, uh, several things that Bishop has passed to you. One thing is his heart. You have an amazing heart. Mm -hmm. And when we were at the, the the funeral, I was I was I was not okay, but I was okay. Mm -hmm. And when I saw you, we hadn't talked on the phone just a few times. Mm -hmm. It's like you looked at me and poured it all out. And I broke down like a, I can't say that word, could that be offensive? But I just <laughs> broke down like a punk. Hmm. And it was just, and it took me a while, so I just held you a little bit longer than what I would have held a white man. <laughs> and, and I, I to get my tears fixed. But when I came back, I was back to myself. But yeah, great, great, great connection that even even mm. from the other side, and no one caught in the way that you know him and I know him yeah. is he this was like set up. He mm. set this all up and brought so many amazing people together. My my wife always says he he left us, but he left us together. He left us with each other. Mm. Oh, that was Will Bogle. Sorry. Sorry, Will. That was he left us together. So yeah. that was a sacred moment we shared. All right. So um Dr. Larry Reed and I met each other um, in a little bit of uh, chaos, uh, I guess would be the, <laughs> the accurate word. That's we were awesome. we were being told um, that Bishop Pearson's homegoing ceremony in Tulsa, we would not be allowed to say the word inclusion. Yeah. And so, you know, Larry, you and I were kind of doing therapy with each other like, hey, this this cannot go down like this. We have to honor this all of this man's path not just his higher D self, but his, his inclusion self. We want to honor all of who this man uh, is and was. And uh, Larry began to plan uh, at, at, at great expense with energy, time, money, um, mm -hmm. uh, probably even having to deal with some different personalities and egos, uh, yeah. a, a proper celebration that would include every piece of Bishop Pearson. What was, was, was there anything juicy when we were planning that thing, Larry, that you'd want to share? Oh, God, there's so much. I mean, but <laughs> but I'm just gonna keep it. 
I'm going to keep it proper. But let me say yeah. this. That was horrendous, a horrendous experience, mm -hmm. excruciating and very painful experience. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it was so beautiful. Yeah. Everybody yeah. in one place celebrating yeah. one thing, and that mm -hmm. was love, which Bishop Pearson was the em full embodiment of a crazy, yeah. ridiculous love mm -hmm. that I've absolutely never seen reminiscent of like old, old, old school church mothers and a man, mm -hmm. which was amazing to me. And that was amazing. You had Shirley Caesar sitting right by Bishop Allen, who was saying, this is my husband. She's like, what did he say? You know, all of that was <laughs> amazing. Everybody worshiping together. However, mm -hmm. being that it was a free event, <clears throat> <laughs> which is a cuss word coming up out my mouth. Um, <laughs> it just brought some very interesting situations that we, yeah. my team, we are not used to dealing with because um, mm -hmm. there is usually some kind of a, a floor much higher. Mm -hmm. But in Carthen Pearson's energy and spirit, it was open to everyone in love yeah. that wanted to come. And the main thing that was sort of difficult to deal with was him not being honored for who he was currently. Mm -hmm. When I went to the Tulsa event, although my heart was filled with love and honor, because there he's, he sits there, he, he's laying there, and they're playing all the things that we remember him by. Um, but I, I just felt in that moment, by then I already knew that I was going to do the event, but I just felt then that, you know, he would have wanted... Mm -hmm. us to do it all together mm -hmm. but for some reason we could not but i think it ended up being exactly the way that it needed to be he was a he yeah. was a king he was a he was a great man and we had several celebrations all the way into this year at mm -hmm. the university you know so it was yeah. it was great 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 but there was drama mm -hmm. it was drama it was the world inclusion and mm -hmm. also bishop yvette flunder they did not want her to say anything and i heard wow. it with my own ears so can't nobody say it's a lie and you didn't yep. see it because i heard it it was interesting uh at at your event uh Le lexi allen was my was my guest last week on bishop pearson show and she got that microphone and said i just have to say one thing <laughs> Inclusion, inclusion, man, I fell out of my chair. I, I felt so relieved that she said I kissed her afterward. Thank you. Thank you, Lexi, for saying that. I, uh, I want to throw some old sayings at you, Larry, and these are, um, these are uh, relative to Bishop Pearson. There's three sayings. Uh, you don't know what you got until it's gone. Okay. Uh, artists, true artists are never appreciated in their own time. Mm. And then mm. today's heretic is tomorrow's hero. Yeah. With with Bishop Pearson's passing, uh, do you think that those those uh, old sayings uh, r relate or apply to him, or or is the church just kind of like back to business as usual? What do you what do you think about that? No, um, if we pay attention to the global church, um, when he passed, it was as if over our consciousness a, a, a veil was ripped. Because mm -hmm. everybody began to ask questions. Mm -hmm. And it really began leading up to his transition. I had never seen anybody transition the way that he did. He was receiving flowers for weeks upon weeks. And mm -hmm. everybody was celebrating him. Even people that threw him away yeah. were celebrating him. I'm like, you know, he was a good man. It was a great contribution. And then the way that he passed and the way he was celebrated, I think it softened the hearts mm -hmm. of many different people. Mm -hmm. Even people began to say things like, I didn't agree with this. And I hate it when they said it. But looking back, I understand you have to meet people where they are. Mm -hmm. And he said, I didn't agree with what he was saying, but he was anointed and he was kind and mm -hmm. he never had a controversy or any kind of scandal. So he lived right. Yeah. And I think people begin to ask questions. Look at our world since his passing, the things that have happened. I mean, in the financial area with what's going on mm -hmm. with Ethereum and, and Bitcoin, what's happening wow. in our government right now, what happened in the Roman Catholic Church now, affirming same sex, affirming, maybe it's too big of a word, but at least yeah. recognizing and blessing. Blessing, yeah, blessing. Same sex mm -hmm. marriages. Mm -hmm. All of this stuff that has happened in the last three or four months, then these exposures, and we know he went to sleep with secrets. Sure well, did. we know them, mm -hmm. but they all don't know them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But he went to sleep with secrets and and really covered people, and he was ready to tell it mm -hmm. on his bed. And there's some things on his bed of transition he did tell. I haven't aired yet, mm -hmm. but 
this this man really ushered in Aquarius. Aquarius, yeah. Pluto went into Aquarius in January. Wow. Whenever Aquarius goes into uh, and Pluto goes into Aquarius, the United States grow go go through growth. Mm-hmm. And that happens explosively. It happens terribly. It's ugly. It's very painful and excruciating. It also pulls things up. What has been hidden gets exposed. Come on. Mm-hmm. Also, mm-hmm. anything that you have buried in your heart, you feel the need to speak it and to express it. It can be your story or your lie, or it can be your truth. Mm-hmm. Or you just feel like just telling it. You have to free yourself of all. All of that is the work of um, Pluto in Aquarius and Bishop Carton Pearson ushered in his yeah. transition, ushered that in. And I also think he also had been working from the other side. I, I feel it too. I, so I, we have, uh, I have a friend, Dr. LaCara Foster, who is a spiritual medium Yes, and she came to uh, spirit and truth a couple weeks ago and presented her, her book about grieving or mourning, uh, actually healing through medium mediumship. And I said, Dr. Frost, I don't know how to say this. I feel Carlton Pearson's presence Mm -hmm. on the other side, opening doors, pushing conversations, Mm -hmm. uh, making things happen. There's a, as you said, uh, uh, doctor, there's a, there's a new sense of curiosity Mm -hmm. and openness. Um, and you know, I always question because I was with him when people would be disrespectful and rude and he would know things Mm -hmm. about their private lives. And, And we would get back to the hotel. I would say, CDP, why didn't you? expose them or like go at them. Don't let them talk to you that way. And now I know that in his death, the the people who said those harsh things against him are having to reconsider yeah. that Christ nature that was in him. They're, they're living with that guilt now. And yeah. um, whatever that is, it's, it happened for a purpose. Definitely Christ nature. Yeah. Um, I haven't seen anything like it. Um, yeah. And I'm so honored and grateful that I had that opportunity and I was blessed to, to be touched by somebody like that who touched so many. Yeah. yeah. He lived, uh, I, I share often with his, uh, one of his other sons, uh, Bishop Stephen White. We, oh, are you, hey, baby Jesus. What's up, Bishop baby Jesus, Stephen White. Shout out to Columbus, Ohio. Uh, we talk often that Bishop Pearson preached inclusion, but he lived holiness. Uh, because one of the one of the criticisms, Larry, was that oh, Carlton Pearson preaches inclusion because he has this crazy private life. Look, I knew I had access to his cell phone. He he lived in my house. I saw his comings and goings. He, if he had a little drink of wine, that's about it. Paul said a little. I, he just he didn't have women on the side. He didn't have he wasn't stealing money from somebody. Oh. He lived a holy life, but he pre and that brought more power to inclusion because. He wasn't preaching it for himself. He was preaching it for the world, that, that Christ mm-hmm. loved the world. I, I really love that about him. Yeah, and, and let, let me say this. He also didn't have any men on the side. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, let, me, let me tell you the reason why I'm saying that, because yeah. that kept coming up. And I don't know, but I do know, anytime you got a man, particularly a black man, because this was not coming from the, his white community. Mm-hmm. This was coming from the black community. Because, and they done Obama the same way. Whenever a black man begins to wrap his arms around all, including the LBGTQAI plus, or just begin to be an ally or a champion, you know, for their muted voices, mm-hmm. then they're doing that because they are yeah. involved in yeah. same sex activities. And that ain't the case. He was he was not I I'm gonna tell you, I can't even say what he will share. Because mm-hmm. then you would think it's improper, but he had a dark sense of humor and was very o- open <laughs> and was saying some of everything. Trust me, Bishop Carlton Pearson loved women. He just loved everybody as they are, and yep. that kept people yep. from hearing his heart. That this was Christ that was in this man. This mm-hmm. ain't have nothing to do with what he felt and what he thought. He yeah. just had a, a a Christ experience, and he was sharing that love with everybody. He he would sit, when he would preach at our church. Usually, the last twenty years, probably five or six times a year, he preached for us. But he was sit. He would always sit right next to me on the stage, and he would always lean over and whisper little ridiculous things to make me laugh during the service. And so, 
we had a we had a, a a worship leader for many years. She's still with us, and she had she lost a lot of weight. She was working out, and so he sat beside me. She had a real tight pair of pants on on stage. He leaned over and he said, "Who is that with that fine tail right there?" She he said, "If you know," he said, "She got some backfield commotion going on." Uh, he, he told my baby mama, said, "You looking like a snare, <laughs> you look like a, a, a stumbling block." Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I see Kristen yeah. Smith with somebody that Bishop talked about on uh, his on his um, better yeah. transition, and yeah. said that he was one of those great voices. And he just said mm-hmm. they call me gay too, and he got a whole wife, you yeah. know. So, yeah. and, and that's his thing. I'm even seeing some mm-hmm. witch, bald head husband in the chat <laughs> talking about that I've done this, I done that, and I'm this, I'm that. Let's go ahead and give you the shine that you want to have. <laughs> if you go to hell. And I, I, whether you believe it or not, and no matter what Bishop Carton Pierce said, it's a hell right now. <laughs> you going, and we want you to go <laughs> with your ugly hats. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Bishop Bishop used to say, Larry, he he would, and we'll I'll get into a, another question with that as well. But um, he would say, De, from what you and I know about all these preachers who are giving me grief and criticizing the message, he said they. They tells better hope I'm right yes, because sir. if I'm wrong, they're gonna bust hell wide open. Yeah, and he just he held those things kind of quietly. He just never would he never would really expose anybody. I was talking to uh, Lexi last week, and she said, "Yeah, that that's not my anointing. I will expose you if you talk about me." Me too. <laughs> me, too, me too. And, and you know, I'm I'm having to learn. And Bishop Pearson would often say, "He said, Larry, a lot of the things that people envy about you is your freedom." He said, because you get to be completely yourself Mm -hmm. and you get to be the gospel artist, the author, the prophet, the Mm -hmm. pastor, and you don't have to lie. Right. And I'm and I am never going to do anything and not be able to be my complete 100 percent self. And I think. Him having that eye to discover talent, I don't know if everybody knows this, Mm -hmm. Bishop T.D. Jakes. Yep. Ross Myers. Yep. Michael Pitts. That, the, oh, yeah. That's his name. That's the one that told Brian um, Pop. My, Michael. Not, yeah, Mike. Yeah, I know mm-hmm. what it is. Yep. I, don't, I don't care too much for him, but yep. <laughs> I don't get too much for him because he told Brian Poppin to not have put my name on the song that he had me to pre-record oh, called my goodness. I Got Out. But that's my voice that y'all hear up there, but my name ain't on it because wow. he didn't want my name to be on it. But I still treated him nice when Carson passed. He mm-hmm. inboxed me. I still treated him nice. Mm-hmm. But I still got this for him. But anyway, yeah. but Bishop Carton Pearson was able to spot talent. And mm-hmm. so when he met, when I met him, he like instantly was able to discern who I was without me explaining mm-hmm. anything to him. Mm-hmm. And and I think that that is not celebrated enough. Yeah. That this man had a gift to see the gift. Mm-hmm. And yeah. support the gift and, and hand walk that gift into their next mm-hmm. level. And man, that's why I had to be at your event when you became a bishop, because I'm like, Bishop Carton Pearson definitely is pushing him from the other side because I know wow. DE do not want to be nobody bishop. <laughs> I, I re- <laughs> so for, for those of you who don't know the story, uh, Bishop Pearson tried to consecrate me uh, in when I was about 33 years old, I'm 51. So 18 years ago, he tried to consecrate me a bishop. And I just said, Bishop, I love you. You are my mentor, but it's not for me. Then uh, Bishop Barbara King, the late Bishop Barbara King from Hillside Chapel, uh, tried to consecrate me and I said the same thing. And then Archbishop Bernard Jordan uh, wanted to consecrate me about five years ago. And I said, Archbishop, I have so much respect. I just don't think those are my clothes to wear. And when Bishop mm-hmm. Pearson died, the outpouring for need, of a need for covering was so overwhelming that my wife looked at me. We were in Tulsa. She said, you know that you are going to have to become a bishop. And I oh, said, she yeah. said that at the event? At the event. She said, you're, you're going to have to do it. And I said, I know. I, 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 I surrendered to it. I did, yeah. Wow. You know, you, you, you set up this next, you were just so in the spirit a minute ago, Larry, because my, the next thing I wanted to ask you was about Carlton Pearson's, um, uh, his feeling toward you. Mm-hmm. And um, he had a gift to see anointings. That's really an apostolic gift to set 
to set the, the my, my, my predecessor would say it this way, that the fivefold ministry is the apostle, the prophet points the finger, the evangelist reaches out further, the pastor is the wedding ring, it's married to the people, and then you have the teacher. But the apostle touches all of those giftings and has to understand them. Carlton Pearson was a, an apostle. Bishop and apostle are almost interchangeable. Mm -hmm. But he, he could see the gifting. He knew where the gifting belonged in the body. And he saw that about you. He, he would say to me, D, Larry Reed is called to the body of Christ for this season. His mm -hmm. voice has to be heard. What he's doing uh, is help, helping us to shift in mm -hmm. consciousness. And so I don't know if you know this, Larry, but I named my son Micah after the prophet Micah. And when I was thinking about you today, I thought, Larry cares, he carries that prophetic anointing of the prophet Micah because the prophet Micah would always speak the truth. Mm -hmm. Even even when he got even when the other prophets were, you know, prophesying things that weren't true or for fame or fortune, Micah would always keep it real. He always would 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 make it plain. And that's the way Bishop Pearson felt about you. I don't know if he if he said it in those words, but to me he said that about you many times. Yeah, he he did. Um, and every time he would he would sometimes just wake up in the morning, it's like God put him on, put me on his heart, and he would just test me these overwhelming prophecies. Mm -hmm. And I still have them, mm -hmm. and they always stop me in my tracks. Mm -hmm. I mean, because I know who who this is. Yeah. And if he's saying what he's saying and who he has met all these different people and he's recognizing this in me. It was a great affirmation. The first one to do that was of course my mentor Bishop the Arch Ebenar R. Jordan. Um but he introduced me to Pearson and Pearson did the same thing until he passed like weeks before he passed. Wow. He wow. continued to do that. And so I have that those text messages saved and I read over them and I do understand what I'm doing. When I first started I didn't Mm -hmm. I, I didn't know. I just yeah. answered a, a tug and a pull. Mm -hmm. I had been pastoring several different churches, my own organization and network of churches for 20 years, traditionally. And about 2011, I just felt like I needed to record all of the music I had been writing because all, all my churches were singing my music. Mm -hmm. But it was just us, you know, for us to do. And I started recording. And when I did that, that caused me to get back into the music industry, mm. which is much different than ministering at church. I mean, radio, the traveling, you know, getting the CDs done, meeting your marks and reporting them to Nielsen so that you can hit the billboard. And mm. I really got into that. And then I had to do interviews behind the mic like this. And whenever I would go on the radio tours and get behind the mic, I will fall back into something that I hadn't done since before I started pastoring, which was being on the radio. Mm -hmm. I used to be on the radio. And so when I got on those mics on the road, I began to feel something else pulling at me. Mm -hmm. And so I began to enjoy the radio tours. I, I will go, even if nobody could go in and had a driveway to Mississippi from North Carolina, I, I, will, I would do that. And what ended up happening was I felt this call to move to Atlanta. Now, mind you, my church is doing well in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. So I moved to Atlanta, and I'm still driving back every Sunday to the church. But when I decided to shift the church, because this happened while I was worshiping the church, it said all of this is supposed to be put in the digital space online. And then the spirit took me later on to the year 2020. I was, but I was standing in six, 15, 2015 mm -hmm. and said the entire global church needs to build online so cyberly by 2020. Yeah. And so when I got that word, I turned to my then wife. I said, I got it. She said, what's the money you got? I said, all of this, I know what I'm supposed to do. Mm -hmm. So I moved my church that was doing well online and so that allowed it to where wow. i didn't have to drive back and forth to north carolina all the time mm -hmm. and eventually what ended up happening 
I, I mean, I just started prophesying on Sundays, receiving the type, receiving the offering live just with my members. Mm-hmm. And the first Sunday I'd done that, November the 1st of 2015, I knew I was called to be online talking. Mm. Now, I had been doing it since 2006 here and there. No, it was before 2006. 2002 is when I first started talking online. Mm. And then I turned it up a little bit in 06, really turned it up in 2012, but it was mostly ministry, a little funny stuff, but not just talking like my, myself, you know. Yeah. And so when that happened in 2015, and I got clear on that. 2017, I Larry Live has started blowing up so much mm-hmm. that I said, you know what? Let me just stop the whole church thing. So that ended my 20 years of pastoring traditionally. Wow. What I didn't know then, I know now, is that I just went into pastoring a different way as an entertainer and commentator. Wow. That's basically what happened, you know, because so the church is still doing strong, mm-hmm. the ministry doing strong. I have to talk to thousands of people. Every single week, mm. prophesy to people every single week, still mm. still teaching on Sundays and on Wednesdays. And the team is prophesying to hundreds and thousands of people a week. Mm. You know, so I am very clear on what I'm doing now, yeah. but I wasn't in the beginning. And I made some mistakes. When I first started talking about what it was in the public, you know, I just I been myself and I would mm-hmm. do all sorts of jokes. Right. <laughs> and then, then when I started meeting the people that I was talking about or somebody connect, I'm like, oh, that ain't what I meant. I'm not trying to hurt you. And I found myself trying to explain myself all the time. Sure. I thought, well, let me just change how I'm doing some, some of this. And so I always stuck with my rule, though. If it's yeah. not public, I'm not going to talk about it. But right. once it becomes public, mm-hmm. then I can say whatever I want to say. It's you know? funny. Uh, you and I talked today talking about... Uh, jokes and and uh things that carlton pearson would say we we talked on the so uh, larry and i talked on the phone today and i said yeah my wife has been working in carrollton all week and so he said oh you ain't had none this week <laughs> i said no i haven't had any this week he said i said but bishop pearson help me larry said how is that i said well he taught me about the five-fold ministry <laughs> yes it's okay we're gonna do it he said he said de whatever your hand finds to do uh-huh. Do it with all of your might, son. Yeah. <laughs> See, people don't know that that style of, of Carlton. He it was when I tell y'all, and and really, Bishop Jordan is the same way. And he, and he, he is just as funny. I mean, it will say anything. So when anything. I get around these guys, I yeah. laugh and I laugh at their jokes because yeah. they're all hilarious. I will never forget. Uh, we were coming out of a meeting with me, Kendall, Nathan, and Bishop Pearson. One of us had to use the bathroom, but I didn't have to go. So I was actually sort of walking with mm-hmm. Bishop Pearson. And we stood there and talked. And Bishop Pearson went into the bathroom. He came back out. I said, oh, my God, that that was so fast. That was so so quick. He said, yeah, you get my age. You get... <laughs> it happens real quick. So we were laughing and laughing. And I said, so, Bishop, I said, so, I said, I said, so do you still feel sexual and, and get turned mm-hmm. on and, and get erected? He said, yeah. well. When I get my knees, he said it doesn't. He said it doesn't get all the way. He said it just gets heavy. heavy. It don't <laughs> get hard. It just gets heavy. So. <laughs> and I, and I, I, listen, when I tell you, Bishop Carlton Pearson was a great balance of humanity and spirituality. He really and was. Yeah. I love what you said. You said teach inclusion and live holy. Right. Bishop Carlton was a holy living man. And there'd be sure some was. things we have to explain to him. He'd be like, yeah. what does that mean? What are they talking about? I said, Bishop, this is what it is. This, this is what it is. He said, my God, for real? I said, yep, yeah, that's exactly what it is. He was really a holy man. Yeah. And I, I will say this, that we, we can teach, preach inclusion, mm-hmm. love, but, and, but we should also live holy. Yeah. I, agree. I mean, holiness yeah. really is to me. Mm-hmm. Holiness isn't about the vertical; it's about the horizontal. How you treat your brother, how you mm-hmm. show up. Uh, Come on. Uh, do you yep. keep your word? Yep. Do you bring harm or not? Yeah, there you and go. And I think that is what holiness really is, and we should be in the practice of bringing no harm. Yep. Love your love your neighbor as you love yourself. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there's a, there's a, it's interesting as a, you know, I was, I was raised in America's original mega church. Um, and so 
you know, you kind of see a little bit of everything. Some preachers are so serious. They can never laugh. I absolutely fell in love with Carlton Pearson because he was powerful in the pulpit, preached under the anointing, could sing his tail off. But in private, he wasn't he wasn't stuffy. He was he he, he laughed. He laughed at himself. He didn't take himself uh, too seriously. I I, I want to segue into this conversation about about his impact. He um for so many years we've swept things under the under the church's rug and we didn't want to talk about things. And Bishop Pearson just brought him out in the open and said, "We're going to talk about him." You know, we he would say about our church services that um, we we sing the songs of our of our same gender loving brothers and sisters mm-hmm. and then we curse their souls and he brought that to the surface how can we continue playing this charade of singing the songs and i won't i won't name all the gospel artists that i know to be same gender loving i will but <laughs> yeah i know you will. Uh, but bishop would say it's not right that we celebrate their songs and while we're cursing their souls so so my history uh, from my predecessor larry is um, he, he had some struggles in his personal life early in ministry. He was the national spokesperson for the church of God, mm-hmm. uh, their, their radio uh, voice. Uh, he had built one of the largest churches in the church of God. His father was the general overseer of the international church of God. Mm-hmm. Uh, but he was having some temptation and he went to talk to uh, his overseer and, um, he said, I, I don't know what to do. I'm having some temptation in my marriage and I don't, I don't know how to deal with it. And his, uh, the counselor said to him, young man, I'm going to do you a big favor. I want you to stand up, turn around, walk out that door and act like we never had this conversation. And so it was basically, he was told suppress it. Mm -hmm. Don't get help. Don't talk to anybody. Don't definitely don't divorce because you'll lose your preaching license if you divorce. And so Mm -hmm. that just kind of anything that is suppressed is going to find its way back to the surface, whatever, whatever that is, it could be sexuality. It could be our, our private lives. Uh, Bishop Pearson brought some things to the surface that, that we have been talking about and need to be talk talking about. Do you feel like with his transition that, that conversations are less taboo now, or are they still just as controversial? I am only can speak in the world that I'm in. People yeah. are more open. They're way more, way more open to have the conversation. One of my tactics when I brought Bishop Jordan and Bishop Pearson to the platform, because mind you, they were the misfits. They were the thrown away. Charisma Magazine had done a job on both of them. Yeah. So when I brought them to the platform, and this began to happen in 2019, because that's when my platform began to sh- shift. I made it my business to not have a conversation with either one of them about the thing that charisma was dragging them about. Mm -hmm. So I presented to my audience who they were as people and let them hear their wisdom on other topics. Mm -hmm. And eventually everybody began to open their heart to them because, hey, these are yeah. These men are saved and they're smart and they're saying stuff we don't ever hear people say. Mm -hmm. And so with Bishop Pearson, we didn't have the hell conversation till till later on because that was the thing that the media had pushed right. so hard. And it's amazing to me how we as followers of Jesus Christ have made hell and the devil devil way bigger than Jesus <laughs> in the cross. Come on now. You know, but that was what was so amazing about um, Bishop Carlton Pearson was his uh, his ability to resonate with people if you gave him a, ch- gave him a chance. Yeah. And we gave him a chance. Mm-hmm. And now those conversations yep. that were difficult to have, we could just have, even when he came, what came last mm-hmm. time he sat right here, which I want to think about it, this will make me sad. But the last time he came, he sat right here, it, the conversation just flowed and we talked about everything. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't like that before. Yeah. Um, yeah. He really, and I, I, it's hard for me to wrap my head around this, but I, I think it's the truth. I think he went away at the right time. Yeah. yeah. I, I wanted him to stay longer because mm-hmm. I needed about another 10 years. I mean, you had it. Yeah. I mean, everybody else had all these, all these long time with him and all these mm-hmm. stories. I had four or five years yeah. and I felt like I needed more. Mm-hmm. But anyway, let me get out of that. 
Yeah. Um, so um, he, I think he passed at the right time because yeah. people began to ask certain questions and have certain conversations. And we have to acknowledge that he is the trailblazer mm-hmm. for us being able to have the conversation the way that we're having it now with the people that we're having it with now. Yeah. You know, it's it's interesting you said that because I struggled with his passing. I I wasn't ready for him to go. He was only 70. Um, I mean, he had literally had been to our our, our church, Larry, in uh, June. My father turned 85. Bishop Pearson surprised my dad and showed up for his 85th birthday and preached for us that Sunday. Mm-hmm. He, I put his microphone. He was healthy. He was still had all of his weight on him. We yeah. we actually took a we walked the dogs together that weekend. We talked. We, I mean, it was so quick. Uh, and uh, and I struggled. And and to, when you were talking, I almost went there. But this is the first day, Larry, since November nineteenth that I have not cried. The wow. first day of my life, and it's not over with yet. It's not midnight yet. But yeah, I, it's the first. I've never grieved in my life. I, I've done funerals my entire life. I've lost loved ones. I have never, and I thought I was prepared because I, I was with him in hospice. I, I flew mm-hmm. seven times mm-hmm. to Tulsa to take him to chemotherapy, to feed him, to wash him, to change him, to take him to his appointments. Mm-hmm. You know, I thought my heart was prepared to let him go. And I have cried every day since November 19th. I, I wasn't ready for him to go, but he was ready to go. He was. And he and I think it, I, and when you were talking, like it was reminding me of when Jesus said to the disciples, it's to your benefit that I leave. Mm. Because if I leave, whoo, I feel a preach right there. Mm. I will send something to you. Yeah. It is almost as if Bishop Pearson is sending this openness and this curiosity mm-hmm. and this revolution of thought uh, to us. But you were just all up in that. Do, do you sense, uh, I knew that Carlton was broken. His heart was broken. I, In my opinion, I think the way his heart was broken, it manifested out into his body. That's Absolutely. what I, I perceive. Um, do, would, do you think it's accurate to call him a modern day martyr? Do you think he's a church martyr? Yes, because we killed him. Yeah, and and I I said that then I say it now. It, 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 now of course, as I said before, I feel like it was the perfect time. But we begin to look at things and how it transpired. Mm. That cancer developed the first time in the heat of that stuff. Mm-hmm. Then he began to minister and do what his soul needed to do, and that cancer was was gone. But he, when he started coming back around, and he would go and sit in spaces and places where he know the pastor didn't like him and dragged him and talked about him and wrote articles like Jake's <laughs> did about him. Yeah. And he went to his celebration for his birthday. Wow, he sure You did. know, and I'm like, mm-hmm. Bishop, what, what is wrong with you? You want to be... I feel as though yeah. those things he experienced, it sort of stirred that pain back up. Now, he had me, he had you... He had Mike. He had all these other different people that were around him to minister to him and to show him how much we love him. But at the same time, he was getting back into that circle and that world where these people had handled him a certain kind of way. I agree. I believe that just caused at a cellular level his cells to begin to go through some changes. And that's all that cancer is, is just abnormal cell activity and growth. And I think that is exactly what took him out. And in the interview, um, I think I played that part. I haven't played the whole thing. I'm just listening to when it's supposed to happen. He mentioned that. I asked him that question. And he said, you know what? I hadn't thought about that. But now I realize that me internalizing all of that pain actually Mm -hmm. is the cancer. Now, those of you that that read a lot, you know, in cancer studies, they're now saying this, Mm -hmm. that the psychological anxiety, stress, holding in your feelings, trauma, unforgiveness, unforgiveness is a big one, Um, hurt, pain, can throw your body off and you can end up sick. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's it's your, your, that ease is removed from you. It's dis at ease, disease, and that thing can eat you yeah. up. So yes, my yeah. answer to that question would be yes. I see him as a martyr. He, um, you know, I, I tell people 
he he was broken, but he was never bitter. It was such a strange mm -hmm. phenomenon that his heart was literally broken from the people that he loved, that he included, that he platformed, that mm -hmm. he helped them get their start. He mm -hmm. was broken by the white evangelicals that he thought were in his corner. Mm -hmm. He was broken by the some of the traditional black spaces. Mm -hmm. He just but he never he never hated he never held unforgiveness but he was he was br a broken man I, I i'll tell you this story i don't know if you know this story larry but when his mentor when when oral roberts died um bishop pearson was not invited to the funeral mm -hmm. and think about how many times he filled that maybe center mm -hmm. with 15 20 thousand uh, people how many times he brought millions of dollars to both oru and to the city of tulsa yeah. And here he is not even invited to his own mentor's funeral. Not, not that we wanted to, he had to say something. He wasn't even invited. And so he came in anyway, and he sat in the back of the auditorium. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I, I'd, I've never shared this publicly, I'll share it now, Larry. I, when I thought that we were not going to have a voice to speak in some of the Tulsa services, I said in my heart, I don't want to go. I don't even want to go because I'm going to be mad. I'm a put my hands on somebody. I'm just not going. Mm -hmm. And Brandy said, is that what Carlton would have done? DE? Mm -hmm. He went, he went into spaces mm -hmm. where he was not even honored for who he was. He was a general in the church body and he sat at his mentor's funeral in the back pew. He's, mm -hmm. she said, I don't care if you speak or not, we're going. Mm -hmm. And I said, yes, ma'am. <laughs> and when I, when I agreed to go, then all of this stuff just opened up and I had a chance to speak and felt like I gave at least part of uh, some honor to him. Uh, you did amazing. Service. You did amazing. Yeah. You did yeah. amazing at both services. It was amazing at both, both services. Well, thank you. That's, uh, uh, that's probably why I fell in your arms. I was emotional too after that. <laughs> yeah, but you don't do that no more now. <laughs> I feel like somebody that snatched both my balls and throw them away. We <laughs> just run down to them little girly balls. It was terrible. <laughs> I do not want this person. To <laughs> it was horrible. We're going we go to say a special prayer just to get all that back, Larry. We got all you. Right. <laughs> all right. I'm gonna ask you. I'm gonna ask you uh, one last question, and then I, I want I want to give you the final word tonight. Oh wow! This, so, is, I, this is one thing I love about white people. Yeah. Oh, you start get on time, end on time. No dragging. Oh, I'm t I'm just trying to I'm trying to be respectful of 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 the gospel Hollywood that I'm I'm with tonight. <laughs> so here, here's here's the question that, um, and I I love Lexi if you're watching tonight, I love you and I so respect your your strategic navigation of your career. I'll leave it at that. Um, and thank you, Lexi, for doing the show. If you're watching tonight, I love mm -hmm. you. You're my sister. I asked Lexi this question last week, and and I don't know that it made her uncomfortable, but I wasn't sure she was quite ready to say everything she wanted to say publicly and okay. maybe that some of that's my fault i didn't want to put her on front street but i know personally mm -hmm. of some mega church leaders all over this country that that I, carlton and i talked to for hours in hotel rooms on cruise ships in airports who believe exactly like carlton pearson absolutely i mean they think like he thought that even they would sit with me de i i believe everything cdp taught but they don't say it publicly Right. And so in essence, you, you talked about being authentic to your true mm -hmm. Larry Reed self. Mm -hmm. They are not they are not being true and mm -hmm. they're getting in their pulpits because preaching hell and sin they perceive is more financially lucrative for them. It's more mm -hmm. there's more profit in keeping people under fear and control mm -hmm. and the bondage of, of, of hell and all those really uh, 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 wrong constructs of, of the Bible. But. Mm -hmm. What is your opinion of, and I, and I know that we all have to make money. We all have to keep the lights on. I get mm -hmm. it. I, I really do get yeah. that. But what do you think about preachers who believe what Carlton believed, but they won't, they won't come out with it? Well, you know, the old me will say the hypocrites and a whole lot of other things. But, <laughs> right. but the thing is, I do understand. Yeah. It was a show on uh, called Greenleaf and I have posted this piece of this show. Right. Um, because it was a, it was great. The writers did amazing. Yeah. If we really are baptized in Christ's consciousness and His love, mm -hmm. then we, toward those who are religious, mm -hmm. those who actually are harming and harmful and hypocritical, 
mm-hmm. and what they teach and preach and how they go about doing, we we have to extend some understanding and some grace yeah. towards yeah. their possible process of coming into the next level of that's, love. That's really good. And, really and good. That's Brandy's good. going like this and she's going, man, he's on it, he's on it. That's good. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's what I what I feel. And I think the best way to get people to understand who Jesus is not mm-hmm. is to show them who Jesus is. Ooh, beautiful. And I think that's the reason why people are starting to have these conversations and actually open them, their hearts to think. Or they look mm-hmm. at what has been going on and they know it don't work. Yep. And they know it's, it's, it's improper. Mm-hmm. And that's one of the gifts that God gave us all through the Larry Live show. Yeah. Because we started discussing what was known in public, amplifying that this is wrong, this is not proper, and this is what is happening behind the scene, and y'all don't know nothing about it. Mm-hmm. You know, and that actually caused because the first space of healing is exposure. Mm-hmm. And we're not talking about that malicious lying, passing of rumors, unfounded stuff that happened online. Mm-hmm. But we're talking about when the conversation is led with an intention Mm -hmm. of growing and upgrading the whole. I wrote a book called Church Critic. Mm -hmm. I gave it to my community first, but now you guys can all get it. You have to go to a link and get it. It's called a Church Critic. And we've got, yeah, Brandy's putting up that. She's putting that on the screen now. Yeah, and this book basically explains a lot of what we're talking about, where you can understand the lens from from through which I discuss whatever becomes public. Mm-hmm. People get caught up in the fun, they get caught up in the jokes, but there's thousands that that hear what I say. Yeah. My intention is to critique and to criticize with the intention of reform, mm-hmm. upgrade, and change. If you just let me read this little part, please, yeah. Of the book. It says a church critic exists to examine question and stir the pot of traditional beliefs and institutional practices, pushing for transparency and accountability. Yep. You may ask, well, what is their goal? The goal is to create dialogue, inspire reflection, mm. and then champion change or improvements within the church where necessary. Wow. Critics can spring from different corners, theologians, scholars, activists, or individuals like me who have had extensive personal experiences within the religious institution. The scope of a critic's examination is extensive, spanning theology, social justice, morality, inclusivity, and the role of religion in society. Of course, the book goes on and on. Powerful, powerful. When Ty Tribbett said last week Mm -hmm. that the church, the institution was whack, it was a prophetic statement. I'm going to tell you why it was prophetic. It was it was prophetic because he was speaking it from a platform like, like he was sounding a shofar. Mm-hmm. It was a truth that needed to be reverberated from yeah. the Breakfast Club platform so that the world can see that the church is going through a reform. And I don't know if no anybody paid this attention. When Ty Tribbett was sitting there, he looked like he was going through his thoughts. Mm-hmm. And like, you know, man, this is this ain't right. And they're like, oh my God, why are you saying that to these people? Because the platform that they have, the church only leases it. It's theirs. Right. And so for that moment, Ty took their platform to preach to us a truth that we need to hear. And the world need to see us coming to this understanding and going through this process of decolonization, yep. deconstruction, and it's on, not deconversion. Yeah. It's just that we are getting rid of mm-hmm. these constructs that have yeah. constricted and mm-hmm. afflicted and have poisoned. And I think that we should continually, as a community, push to have the conversation mm-hmm. over to and over to and over to and over to a darn game until <laughs> we are clear enough, <laughs> clear enough to choose Christ Come on. and not Jesus Christ, the mascot of Christianity Incorporated. That's what Ooh, I mean. Preach that word. Preach it. Did anybody feel the both the prophet and 
the doctor coming out right there. That was <laughs> I was I was getting my church on every everything. Uh, uh, Larry, Scripture says everything that can be shaken, yeah, will be shaken. So yeah. that which remains hey. will be the unshakable kingdom of God. Wow! Go in the chat. We I just said that a few minutes ago because I was did say, you um a lot I, every year from December to March. Mm -hmm. I go through online accusations. I have been everything. I got two pins. <laughs> I have a push. Like a shark. You got two like a shark, Larry. I, I, like got, it. I got pushed too. And <laughs> what you saying? <laughs> oh, yeah. In the chat. And I, I, I think they gave me titties. I got titties. And then a drug addict, witch, warlock, <laughs> child molester. I stole fraud. I done scam. PPP loan. Beat my former... Baby, uh, my former wife, who's my baby mama, beat right. my mama. The ma then the list goes on every single year. Yeah. And then talking heads come out with these stories mm -hmm. through their lens that are so salacious. And they're telling their story and also what they think and what they believe and from their viewpoint and what mm -hmm. their experience is and their rumors they heard and however. But right. these people are doing a service. And this called the shaking. Yep. Can you quote that scripture again? You said it so so beautifully. Every, everything that everything. can be shaken will be shaken, so that which remains will be the unshakable kingdom of God. Yeah. So this, so these people that even the liars are shaped because you know what happened. Old folks just say <laughs> say um, if you shake a liar, if the thief will fall out, and you <laughs> and then I mean. It's, <laughs> What it did and what every year happens to me, it prunes yeah. my my world and mm -hmm. makes me grow more. And everybody who gets shook, yep. it's, it's the people that needed to be shaken away and, Come and on. shook mm -hmm. off that yep. may be connected to me because they were a fan, mm -hmm. because they just really liked me by mm -hmm. the, we say in the church, by the flesh. Mm -hmm. But in order to walk and to follow Larry Reed, just like in order to follow Polk or Carton or Jordan, you mm -hmm. have to follow by revelation. Wow. And the thing is, we don't get revelations about it. And that's the thing I miss about Carton. I didn't have to explain who I was. Mm -hmm. He had a revelation. Right. And that is what those that are with me still. I mean, because really... I can count on my hand over the five years how many people I lost. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's 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 great, yeah. you know. But it's always people who needed to be moved away because I was going to the next level, and everybody that needed to go with me needed to have a revelation mm -hmm. of who I was and who I was not. So mm -hmm. everybody's life is getting shaken right now financially. Yeah. Every structure, business yep. models that have worked for years, they're collapsing. All of that is in divine order because Pluto is in Aquarius and trying to get us to come into an Aquarian energy. And remember this and that I say that the Aquarian energy is the queering energy. Mm -hmm. Everybody that is listening to me, you are becoming more queer mm -hmm. as we go through this year. And it's going to continue to go on for the next 20 years. And when you hear queer, you need to understand. I'm not saying you're going to start gobbling peens if you're a man or you're going to start munching puss if you're a woman. <laughs> what I am saying is that you are going. <laughs> I mean what I say. I know it's funny, but I mean it. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm feeling you. Hey, there's, there's, tr there's truth in the comedy. I love it. <laughs> what, what I'm saying is that you're going to become more different and unique. Yeah. And really find your niche. Mm -hmm. And that is important because without finding your niche, you can never be rich. Come you on. know, so all, Aquarius is doing all this for us. It's just explosive mm -hmm. and excruciating mm -hmm. and feels a little funny. But I'm telling you, we're, we're exactly where we need to be. We are not in, Bishop Pearson said, we are not in trouble. We are in transition. Ro typical roles are being uh, questioned. If you look at the the picture, out picturing of Aquarius, you're not sure if it's a man or woman. It, there's some androgyny. Uh, if it is a man, it's doing a woman's job. It's carrying a water pot that was that was the cultural, uh, you know, taboo of that day. And so, 
all of those roles are being shifted and challenged. You yeah. you tapped into something a minute ago, Larry, that I want to come back to because I was my baby was leaping up inside of me when you said it. You said Bishop Pearson had a revelation of who I was. Yeah. Think about what Jesus' conversation with Peter was about. Mm -hmm. Peter, who do you say that I am? Thou art the Christ. Jesus said to him, flesh and blood has not revealed this. Yeah. This has to be a heavenly revelation. Then the apostle Paul takes us a little further. He says, even though I knew Christ according to the flesh, I know him thus no longer. Hey. In essence, for us to really know the Christ that is expressing in us, in each other, there has to be a divine revelation of how we see each other mm -hmm. and see each other through the eyes of, um, of that futuristic uh, understanding of what we, what we incarnated to do. Bishop Pearson was a strong believer of our pre-incarnate self that we chose to come here. Hey. We, we chose to incarnate for this, for this iteration. And I asked him on his deathbed, I said, did you choose this? Did you choose to, to basically die to birth this message? And he said, I did. He said, and that's why I couldn't slow down with it. He, and I asked him many times, I said, Bishop, would you, if you could do it over with again, would you break off just like a little piece at a time and not be so, uh, you know, so forceful with your message? He said, I wouldn't do it again. D he mm -hmm. called me Donaldson. He said, Donaldson, this is why I came here. Mm -hmm. It took me till I was 50 years old to realize why I was here. But once I, he said, I didn't come here for Azusa. That was a part of me. And, the, and there are many great conferences that we all have attended. He said, I came here to birth this message and I agreed to it in my pre-incarnate self. And so that's a lot. I know that's heavy. Um, mm -hmm. I, I was going to tell you this, Larry, you, you mentioned Greenleaf earlier. I don't know if you and I've ever had this conversation, but I already so, know. <laughs> Greenleaf was, was recorded at the church that my parents built. Okay. Yeah. The Cathedral of the Holy Spirit. Then they came over to my present sanctuary and record. I was like, why is Oprah Winfrey following me around? What is going on with this? <laughs> Who knows? Oh, I didn't know the last part. I, I didn't know the last part though. What? So when the uh, the uh, the actor that played the the uh, the character Grace in in Greenleaf, the beautiful uh, actress that played Grace, she was visiting her son uh, that she didn't know she had, and they recorded two episodes at my current location. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's unbelievable. I'm, I'm, it's like they just follow follow me. Around. I was yeah. covering the show, so I know exactly what you're talking about. Wow. All right, so I'm gonna tell you one one last funny thing that I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna give you the last word, Larry. So okay. um, I had some people come to me and say they 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 saw us together and saw me talking about you and spending going to dinner with you, whatever. Mm -hmm. And they say, "Man, what do you think about Larry?" And I said, "He's he's precious. He's authentic. He's organic." I said, "Brandy and I went to dinner with with Larry and Shamako, and we fell in love with them. We just it's so easy. We just feel like we're family." Yeah. And they were like, "Don't don't tell him no secrets. He gonna ah. tell it." I said, look here. I said, let me tell you something about Larry Reed. Larry knows that I keep it real and that I, whatever I say in the pulpit is what I really think. Yeah. I said, I don't have to, I don't have to be afraid of Larry Reed because I'm true to me. <laughs> you know, that, that, and that is true. And number one, let me, I, I don't, I don't even know why people put that on me. Yeah. I guess because people, I guess they're just scared of me. They're scared <laughs> of me. But you know, the Bible say prophets are supposed to be fierce. So, hey, yeah. you know, if yeah. they're real and what they say come to pass, you know, but, but there is something good at, not to interrupt. There is something good about that, Larry, because if we, if let me step back and get and give myself a panoramic vision of of your anointing, because of uh, the ability, your ability to show hypocrisy at times, I think there are some church voices who have to think twice before they give their messages. Now, they have to say, "Hey, I don't want to be caught in this hypocrisy." And I, I'm, I'm appreciative of that because I think it, it brings their authentic self into the pulpit. I haven't even thought about that, but now I know you're telling the truth. Come on, you, tell I, I remember <laughs> plenty. I mean, you had Marvin, Sapp, so many different pastors will say in their pulpit. Yeah. And me, I will be in their message. Mm -hmm. You know, if I end up doing this, y'all take and be gave it to Larry Live, you know, which yeah. is just improper. What right. happens is these folk don't know how to keep their hoes happy. <laughs> and when you don't keep your hoes happy, <laughs> Now I'm not telling you you got to you got to do whatever your whole say. Right. I mean, cause y'all seen the angle ang with angle. Let me, let me not have, say that like that. But when they when they you stop giving them the pain and the money, they're gonna come out here online and and in times past I always picked it up. That's the only <laughs> reason your story will get out there. But right. <laughs> some of these pastors, 
they yeah. just didn't handle their hoes right. I mean, mm-hmm. cause you can't lay down as a king, yep. lay down with someone and give them the experience of king ping. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, then and then you take snatch it away. It. Yep. And then go on to the next. And you can't do that. You done did this with me for two or three years. Yep. You have to make me complete. You may need to have to give a severance. You may have to do something, a, a conversation, because <laughs> that they are they're gonna measure every person they wit and every situation they are in by yeah. King Ping. And it's impossible yeah. because you're a anointed yeah. man and you land down with somebody like that's a lot of energy that they're getting from you. It's not just the ping, they getting they getting your spirit. The anointing. They feel snap, the anointing. You yeah. that. Mm-hmm. You, can't, you can't do that. But the reality yeah. is, that, let me say this. Whenever y'all hear somebody say that I put somebody to business out, it's, mm-hmm. you need to understand what they're saying. What they're saying, they heard it first on my platform. Yeah. So I, I'm the echo. I'm the mm-hmm. amplification. It always comes out first. And I always know way more than what I say. I only talk about what is out here. I only Very go true. into I only go into more mm-hmm. if that person responds to me and now they're trying to say what I'm saying is a lie and where's your proof? Then I have to go in my bag and say, all right, here she is. And here's yep. these three over here. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And I can vouch for that because with the times that we've been together, you have said, mm-mm. That I know these certain details, but that's not that's not mine to tell right now. Yeah. I, I can vouch for that. Yeah. I'll tell I tell um, de. I'm going to tell you people who close to, like de. I will tell me Bishop Carden Pearson. I will tell I will tell Jordan. I will tell Manasseh. I don't even tell the people right around me that's in my camp, mm-hmm. and they will tell you they find out when I cover it. They're like, why didn't you tell us that? You know, because I am naturally a person that keeps secrets. Yeah. I keep secrets and um and I've been able to do it for years. Even some of the people that have went out and told lies on me, you know, I I like I can go live and you won't be able to be sure your your face nowhere again. <laughs> but I, I it don't even come across in my mind because yeah. it's just not a part of my character at yeah. all. And so when y'all hear someone say that, they just saying they heard it first on my platform. It wasn't me that, mm-hmm. that put it out. That's that's accurate. Yeah, I want to, uh, Brandy, if you will bring up, will you bring up Larry's uh, new book again? We wanted to show uh, the book. Mm-hmm, look at that, looking good. <laughs> there it is. Look, look, the graphic is beautiful too. I love that, Larry Church mm-hmm. critic, and mm-hmm. I love the way he unpacked that to us. What what is the what is the purpose of the Church critic? Yeah. It is a voice that matters. It is a voice mm-hmm. of re- of reformation, of revolution. In many ways, uh, Martin Luther was a Church critic. Martin Luther King Jr., Carlton Pearson was a church critic. These are yeah. anointings that we carry for reformation uh, mm. and for revolution. So I'm going to give you, uh, Dr. Larry Reed, my friend, I'm going to give you the very last word tonight. And then uh, we've got a few announcements, but I won't, I won't make you hang around for that. Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much for inviting me. I'm pretty sure plenty of people called you and said, do not have me on this platform. And what are you doing? Oh, my God, Larry Reed. I'm sure, but you're bold and you're not bought. You're free like me. And you can say whatever you want to say. Teach, <laughs> teach it. Teach and do whatever you want to do. Yeah. What I want to say, I'm going to ask that everyone that is watching will go to LarryReadLive.com, scroll down, and I want you to click purchase this book. You need it, and you will be able to clearly understand not just my lens when it comes to certain things, but you're going to also understand the world that we are shifting into. If you are a pastor, if you are a preacher, you're a teacher, you're a gospel artist, you need to get it. Because just some of the topics, we talk about fatherlessness in the church. And mm. I do mention some Good. of the things that I've done on my show. The ivory tower, Christianity and whiteness. Mm. Good. And then the next chapter after that is African Christianity. Wow. Because that's that's African, you know, because Christianity is basically the whitewashing and the raping of all African spirituality. Mm-hmm. That's true. Yeah. And um, and especially Pentecost. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. The marginalization and abuse of women. Mm-hmm. First ladies as second ladies. So we talk about the infidelity that's in the first family. Mm-hmm. Um, wow. Christianity struggle with the LBGTQAI plus community. Mm-hmm. Um, the church dance with humanity. And the church and social media in the digital age, and then also embracing reform. 
So take your hand in over to LarryReadLive.com. Scroll down, click that button, buy the book. You can turn this into your book that your little group is going to be doing at the house. Call them over once, once a week and just go through the book. You Pastors, this can be your Bible study to shift the consciousness in your church because you know, like I know, that what we have been doing a lot of some of it need to be thrown away. Yeah. But some of us are gonna be kept and then married to the future of where the church is going. And this book can help you. That's all. It's a handbook, it's a guide, it's honest, it's relevant, it is revelatory. Go out and support these voices like this that are speaking truth to power. Larry Reed, thank you so much. I, I owe you either a dinner or something, but thank you for loving on me. I, I, I certainly you appreciate you and, and for helping us build. Um, Carlton Pearson's Legacy Foundation. I believe it's a, a voice that needs to continue to be heard. But and we, thank we, you for your time we today. We preach tonight, so we need to be doing some kind of giving. What's what's y'all cash app? So or whatever. So the cash app is is, is a dollar sign New Dimensions Two, and that that goes to help uh, the Carlton Pearson Legacy Foundation. Oh, that has a it has an educational wing, a humanitarian wing that we're setting it, setting up, and so we're mm -hmm. we're setting this up in in honor of the legacy uh, and the lineage of Carlton Demetrius Pearson, who is, uh, will be remembered in the history books of the church. Trust me, yeah. trust me, he will be remembered for hundreds of years to come yeah. and uh, will be honored uh, next month again at Morehouse College. So thank you for that, Larry. Thank you so much. You, you're, 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 so, you're so welcome. Make sure y'all give um, to that. I ate. I ate cat, yeah, the cash app is is a dollar sign new men, new dimensions two. If you'd like to be part of the um, the Carlton Pearson Legacy Foundation, my friend, I love you. I appreciate you. I respect you. I honor you. Thank you for your time tonight. All right, it was my pleasure. So we're gonna. I'm gonna give you just a couple quick announcements. Um, if you if you were listening this week, uh, Bishop Carlton Pearson's voice was back on the air, uh, NPR and the New York Times. Uh, ran again his podcast from the show This American Life. And if you don't know the backstory, that was his like his first national platform for inclusion. We knew about it in the church, but he was reaching atheists and agnostics and Hindus and Buddhists and Muslims and Jews. They ran it again this week. And so I'm going to try to get in touch with the producer who did it. They ran the show in honor of Carlton Pearson's birthday that's coming up a week from today. So next week, um, first of all, go listen to that. I think Brandy has the link there in the chat. If you want to listen to that, I listened again today. Powerful interview. The interviewer is, you can tell he's an atheist um, or at least an agnostic, and he's not. he's almost emotional listening to the love of Carlton Pearson. It's a beautiful interview. Uh, but then next Tuesday night, uh, on Carlton Pearson's birthday, it, he would have been 71 years old, March 19th, the next uh, Tuesday night, we are going to celebrate his birthday uh, with uh, Julian, his son, with Majesty, his daughter. We're going we're gonna to release to you uh, her newest, one of her newest songs that is her singing to her dad. His voice is in the music, and he sounds almost like Mufasa speaking to uh, to Simba. It is so beautifully done the way Majesty and the producers did that. So we'll have his his um, his biological children on next week, giving honor to their father. We'll have some of his spiritual uh, children on with us uh, and can, and colleagues uh, next week. And so we'll be showing clips of some of his best preaching, uh, his emotional moments, interviews. So don't miss next week's uh, next week's show. It is an honor of Bishop Carlton Pearson's uh, 71st birthday. Tomorrow night, uh, we're going to be in Inclusion 101. If you want to join us for that, we certainly would welcome. We're going to be breaking down scripturally what Carlton Pearson taught and how we can make it palatable so that this message can reach uh, critical mass and be honored for what I, what we truly believe it is. I think that's all the announcements. It's on our platform. So you can go to uh, uh, mytruthsanctuary.com. If you want to give that brandy, yeah, she's going to put it in the chat. Uh, but you can go through uh, Facebook, through uh, many people connect through YouTube. Um, but we we live it's live stream. But you can connect with us for Inclusion One Hundred and One. If you want to know exactly what Carlton Pearson taught from a scriptural perspective, we're going to break it down. We're going to begin the conversation tomorrow night with biblical reincarnation. <laughs> Imagine that we're going to talk about reincarnation tomorrow night from a biblical perspective. All right, I want to give you a closing thought before we leave, and this is 
right out of the heart of Bishop Carlton Pearson. He would say, the universe uh, will send to you whatever is necessary for the evolution of your consciousness. We are not in trouble. We are in transition. Don't resist the change. Don't resent the change. It is now. It is unavoidable. And it's the best thing that's ever happened to you. Let God have his, her, and its way. We love you guys. Thank you so much for joining us. And hopefully you got something to chew on. Looking forward to reconnecting with you again. Go in peace. May God bless you.